Hello. Uh, I'm so happy to be here, and thank you for coming. Um, my name is Bobby Kaufman. I'm a high school English teacher, and a few summers ago, I spent some time in Israel. And there, I was reading a book, and it talked about how every Jewish person's soul connects to a letter in the Torah. And I don't know if I believe in God, or souls, or the divine veracity of footnotes, but I have an older sister, Michelle, who has a hard time with reading. And I thought, I really hope that footnote is true in that book, because I hope my older sister, Michelle's letter would be L. And L is such a powerful letter because it can break up a fight and turn into a flight. It can, it can take a shove and make it into a shovel to plant seeds. It could, and without an L, the world is just a word. And so I wrote a poem about Michelle titled L, and I wrote another, and another, and 27 more. And that became my first book of poetry, 29, which I wrote in graduate school. And it's 29 poems, 29 letters, and uh, telling the story of my first 29 years. And I'm going to read three poems for you all today. The first one is called E. When I was a little boy, before I became a teacher, I pronounced the word vegetable different. I pronounced it vegetable. I didn't realize that my giggling second grade classmates were giggling at me, but Mrs. Smith did. She asked me about my pronunciation. I said, well, it's the second E that gets me. The second E that gets you what, she said. Well, the first and the third E are heard, I said. So I think the second one should be too. Mrs. Smith said, Bobby, do you have siblings? I said, yeah, two sisters. She said, older or younger? I said, well, one's older and one's younger. She hugged me. She said, don't worry, but you'll be heard one day too. I didn't know what she meant. I just knew that one day I wanted to be a teacher. Thank you. This poem is the letter Z. And this is what I imagine would be the eulogy at Derek Zoolander's wife Matilda's funeral, delivered by Derek Zoolander. I've never been a very good Yagoogalizer, so please be patent. What is there to say about my dead wife, Matilda? No, literally, I do not have anything written down. She was really cool. She was also really hot. She was something really cool and hot. She liked to look at magazines and books without pictures. My most handsome friends always thought she was a little cuckoo. I mean, Earth to Matilda, there are no pictures in there. She also gave birth to our son, Derek J.R. That means junior. I never got why anyone would want to be fat for that long. But as Drocky once wrapped in a North Face jacket, YOLO. Matilda, you were like the LBD, except you were not black or a dress. I, <coughs> I, <coughs> excuse me, I think I have the black heart. No, but for serious, Matilda, you were a good wife and a good mother to Derek number two and a total freak in the bed. Hashtag number sign Luda. <laughs> Z. Thank you. And um, for my third and final poem today, I'm going to attempt something scary for me, and that is go off book. But uh, I wrote a long lyrical ballad uh, about a trip. And raise your hand if you've ever been on a trip outside the US. Raise your hand if you've ever been on a trip that took you. So this, is, this poem is for you. It's called Blueberries and Skier. Skier is that really fancy. Uh, Non-fat yogurt, you can get at Whole Foods. Uh, it comes from Iceland. Um, and blueberries are, are me. So, blueberries and skier. For two months in summer 2012, I set out to write something of beauty. Into songs of myself, I delved to sing honestly my only duty. I'd stay humble, stay low, blow like hootie, and reach across the Atlantic on a break from teaching. In turn, I fell in love with the art of reaching. More American than Stephen Colbert, I two-stepped to rap with my snapback cap. Why go to Iceland? Because it's there. I don't want to just stick pins in a map. I want more than Hamlet, more than the mousetrap. Perhaps the play's a thing, but I'm not a king. I'm just a poet who once heard the wind sing there in that storybook utopia. Ultima Thule's green anthem did crescendo to the opposite of Jacob's Leah. 
Unveiled splendor with a dazzling green glow I won't soon forget, like the Alamo. If beauty is the food for which poets yearned, I devoured a feast while I got a sunburn. A rainbow played hide-and-seek at Gulfoss. The snow-capped mountains and snifelessness awed. If you were my Rachel, I was your Ross. So many wondrous places there to laud. Was this Iceland or that place west of Nod? But nature didn't stir me late, late at night like you did when I held you and you held me tight. I followed this girl Claire to Lebowski Bar where you won me with that first fierce fray a glance and I shared how I cared about ice bears and you cautiously smiled at this rose and crance. If lovely as Paris, you were France. The next afternoon I held your hand at the zoo and my heart began composing this beadu. A blanket, a coke, a Prince Polo bar, a second date, you became my lodestar. The words all rhymed, the stars aligned, we went far, far, farther than Tracy Chapman's fast car. Once in his life, man in motion, John Parr. Like the country boy in Rosetta Stone's ad, I had to call Usher because I got it bad. A fellow told me Elvis Costello was playing harper that Sunday night. Now, I don't play cello nor my bellow, but that night I felt Laxaness's world lights and embrace a touch, a nibble, a bite. The men in black can't make me forget your look. Every day, every day, every day I write the book. But our book's chapters are chapters in between chapters, like that Will and Skyla magic store scene where Will first learns she's more than his quarry. But our story transcends allegory. My heart, like Stroker, explodes, for it's you I choose. I'm thrilled to be your toad. Thank you for being my muse. When you nod your head when we lay in bed, you make me feel keen like James Byron Dean, like I dreamt in color, I dreamt in red. And though I'm not reading Word Up magazine, lo, I still feel like it was all a dream because my life has been since the moment we met, like before sunrise the sun had never set. I've touched sod, I've smelled cod, I've seen birds. I tasted music where others heard noise. Lo, I tripped and fell in love with words. An athlete's body with a poet's voice, a poet's dreams marked by an athlete's poise. But I know I'm a better man when I'm with you, and I believe what Winston Churchill said is true. This is not just the start, nor is this the end. Rather, we are at the end of our start. Stelpa mean I'll be your lover and friend, for the most wondrous map that one can chart is the map with borders drawn by the heart. A kiss, a look, a memory I can't shake when we didn't watch the midnight sun by that lake. But I had paid airfare to Iceland Air, so I left Parnassus and to Dallas, departing truth, arriving at Dare to Vixens, fixing to fill my chalice from this town with a green sky scraping phallus. Like Roger chants, I should tell you, I'm disaster. The art of losing is impossible to master. Because your mom is not a member of the tribe and the distance. Too much for me to shake, imbibed with fear I didn't circumscribe us. So, for Dexter's or passenger's sake, I saw you as the garden, I the snake. As a boy, I never learned to love and be loved, so love for me like OJ with that stupid glove. So I threw in the towel to buy a vow to pen mellifluous words to your name. My line drive down the line was lining foul. I conveyed my heart to pre a game instead of to you in a deed quick claim. Now I'm back teaching these kids at high school. Sometimes life gives you melons, and I guess that's cool. It's not that I care about Drake's motto or Ricky Bobby swagger shake and bake. But your body's a cello and your heart beats vibrato. And my favorite Drake swims in the lake you to take me to thrice in Reykjavik. A chance, a chance, my kingdom for a second chance. I love the way you think. I love the way you dance. But days became weeks and weeks for nights. I cannot forget your Tom Ford smell. I'm not the dark knight in these dark Fort Worth nights. I'm the poor sophomore turned on like Adele, questing for Beatrice like Dante in hell. Perspicacity may seem like a gift to some, but I desperately yearn to be happy and dumb because it's all coming back to me now. Just like Meatloaf said, you engulf my head, the cellist slow bow, your cat's loud meow, your big white bed, the children's books we read, the way you laughed at the way I sang, lady in red, but I left town like a Seattle supersonic. Damn me, Werther, why was I so Lord Byronic? Young and alive, I drive I-35, windshield wiping rain from my cold brown eyes, my Honda inside a ship capsized in waves of regret. I realize I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. I was wrong. Loa, I now know you were the song all along. Now I hear it, as loud as an ice bear's roar. Unlike the sirens sing through the Aegean mist, the wind sings true, ahava, aust, amor. You're the walking poem each night I kissed. Don't let go of our blueberry skirt tryst. In every language, the wind's song is the same. You're what Chuck D. once called the game behind the game. Since the best first date is the last first date, let's go back to June, to that gibbous moon. My longing for belonging, you did say it. I'll imposter, Radney Foster, croon you with this Texas country. I'm in tune. Juliet, the dice were loaded from the start. And I bet, Lord, grant me chastity, but Lord, don't grant it yet. You catalyzed my boyhood love of rhyme. You loved me, unlovable me, oh you. You're the asymptote, the transcend cosine. So I thought, and I thought, and I thought what to do, and thought became this ballad, penned in blue, of an Icelandic bell and a Texan Hebrew, a poem first composed in my heart in the zoo. Our saga's best stanzas are not yet penned, but since poetry is that which is more than true, I quixotically hope your heart will mend. I don't know what else there is I can do. This, this is my 1400 word I love you. 
You bring light into my world like no one else can. I'm sincerely yours, Robert Alex Kaufman. Thank you. So I'll do one more short poem then. And this poem is called, Oh. It's the last poem in my book and it's dedicated to the best teacher uh, I know, my first and greatest teacher, my mom. She cried. Every time a teacher called her to tell her how Michelle was struggling, mom cried. The little girl who had taught Jane Eyre to her teddy bears in Falls Church, Virginia. The girl who taught her older sister and best friend, Sherry, the quadratic formula. The young woman at University of Texas who unpacked the Constitution to inner city Austin teens. The woman who taught teachers at Richland College seemed to be able to teach anyone anything. Anyone except for her own little girl. Michelle had a hard time with numbers, with arts, with sports, with making friends. And Michelle had a really hard time with English. The letters never seemed to add up. One day, my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Donovan, called mom to tell her that I had the highest grade on that month's math test. Zero wrong. And mom cried. Her tears hadn't dried when she picked me up from school that day. Why are you crying, mom? Because I love you so much. Yeah, but why are you crying? Sometimes mom said love doesn't look like what you expect. Every good story is a circle where the hero finds her way back to herself. Thank you.